the next person I want to bring onto the stage is uh, Saeed Nuresh, and he is from Microsoft, a program manager there. He currently lives in both Seattle and Durham, North Carolina. Um, living in both locations is very difficult, and you have to use a teleportation device, I assume? Right. Yeah. So he is an avid rock climber, excuse me, and loves to play acoustic guitar, some folk music. So without further ado, would you welcome Saeed to the stage. Thank you. Well, my um, slides are going to be a lot more boring than Steve's were. There we go. Um, to introduce myself, I'm a PM in Visual Studio Online, and I work on our Git service. Um, and my entire purpose in life right now is to make Git scale for large teams. Um, and there's a variety of teams. I mean, we, we work with a lot of external customers, but even within the company, there's a lot of teams that are migrating over to Git from whatever system they're currently on. There's a lot of them throughout the company. And they have a lot of different needs, um, different requirements, but across the board, I have customers internally that are asking for larger Git repos than, than they should reasonably want, you would think. But, you know, we've got to meet people where their needs are. Um, and, you know, there's, there's teams that just have a lot of code, and we've got to figure out how to make it so that you can have humongous code bases in Git and how to deal with thousands or tens of thousands of branches and those sorts of things. But there are also, like, games or various other, program, um, various other teams that just have large assets that they need to store. Um, and that's, you know, where something like LFS comes in, because you have to be able to manage those those assets um, and not bloat your repo. So we got invo involved with um, LFS pretty early on. Um, before it was called LFS, back when it was Git Media 2, we were working with Rick on, on um, the design of it. And so we implemented the, the protocol very early on and we piloted it on, on a couple of our repos internally, which was great because we were able to give a lot of feedback and, and, and like Rick was very receptive to design um, proposals and feature proposals and things like that. So, like we needed, uh, he mentioned um, compression. We had teams that were adding huge files into LFS, and those files were very compressible. Um, and so we proposed the idea of making um, LFS the client extensible. Uh, and so we built that feature and submitted it. And then um, now we can use you know, teams internally can decide to customize LFS if that's what they want to do. Um, we've you know we've uh, made other um, enhancements, like there's teams that have, want to check in files that are three gigabytes in size. Um, we had to do some work to make that work. Um, right now we're adding NTLM authentication to the client so that it can talk to uh, a TFS server. Um, you know, and along the way we, were just, we realized, you know, Visual Studio has its own Git tooling and we want people to be able to use Visual Studio with LFS. Um, but we actually we don't want to design it for LFS. LFS just uses hooks and filters, so we'll go, we've gone and updated libgit2 and libgit2 sharp to, to understand custom filters and hooks. We're in the process of integrating that into Visual Studio, but any other tool will, who, that uses libgit2 sharp or libgit2 will be able to use that as well. Um, and uh, you know, all this client tooling is great, but when you're talking to different services, figuring out auth is always really tricky. So we actually just yesterday released a new Git credential helper that we're calling the Credential Manager. Um, currently, as for Windows, we're working on other platforms, Linux and Mac as well. And what it does is it will, it talks currently to both um, GitHub and Visual Studio Online. It'll automatically handle two-factor auth. Um, it'll handle generating, a, like in VSO, it'll generate a personal access token and store it in your Windows credential store and um, pass that along to the service, and it's all transparent to the user. You just fetch or push, and it just works, um, which is really nice. Um, we also announced today that um, every Git repo on VSO now supports LFS, um, and there's no extra configuration required. You just um, download the LFS client from, from the Git LFS website and set it up and then push to your VSO Git repo. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just demo that. Um, 
Hopefully this works. My video card has been having problems. Hopefully this connects. Do I need to do anything here? Well, um, there we go, we're in. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into, I just have my own personal VSO account here. Um, nothing special about it. I'm just gonna go and create a brand new, um, brand new Git repo. And um, as soon as it gets created, I'll take the URL of that and clone, clone that repo here. It's just an empty repo. I'm really, all I'm doing is setting up my, my remote. And I'm just going to run. I already have git LFS installed, so I'll just tell it to track zip files. And oh, I'm in the wrong one. It says it's already supported. Demo 2 is the one I just, um, just cloned here. So git LFS track. And I'm going to copy over a zip file that I have and add it. And as Rick said, you know, it's all very transparent. Um, I just added that, that zip file and um, behind the scenes, what it did was it replaced it into, you know, put it in a different location, put what it actually put it in my repo as a text file. So all that just happened right now. Um, I'm going to commit and push it. So now um, what it's going to do is it's going to talk to the um, LFS REST endpoint on VSO, push the, it's pushing up the large file first. It's a small file, but it's a zip file. Um, and then once it, once it succeeded in pushing that zip file, then it pushed the, the commit as normal. Um, and so that, there it is working with VSO. Um, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs>